This video lecture is on DNA technology and genetic engineering. This topic comes in two parts. The first part will include discussion on DNA sequencing, polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis, and DNA fingerprinting. Biotechnology is a broad area of biology that involves technical application of biological systems to produce products and technology that will improve the quality of human life. An aspect of biotechnology is called genetic engineering. This involves direct manipulation of genetic materials of organisms. The products of genetic engineering are also known as genetically modified organisms or transgenic organisms. In the development of biotechnology, scientists and researchers have established different methods. The common methods include DNA sequencing, polymerase chain reaction or PCR, gel electrophoresis, DNA fingerprinting, genetic engineering, recombinant DNA, and cloning. DNA sequencing is a method used to identify the nitrogenous basis of the sample. The genetic sequence of A, T, C, and G allow scientists to identify segments in DNA that carry regulatory instructions and highlight changes in a gene that may cause disorders and illnesses. Prior to decoding the basis, the DNA sample must first undergo preparation in the laboratory as follows. DNA extraction, DNA amplification, gel electrophoresis, and DNA sequencing. Polymerase chain reaction is a method which amplifies or replicates DNA segment until sufficient amount is reached. Since DNA is very small, producing more of the target DNA segment is necessary for application. Gel electrophoresis, on the other hand, is the visual examination of genetic material. Let us go through the laboratory procedures of DNA sequencing. First step is to extract the DNA. The aim of DNA extraction is to isolate the DNA from proteins and other cellular materials. DNA can be sourced from any body cells. Common samples used are tissue swabs, hair strands, blood cells, leaves of plants, and any flesh or tissue of animals. The general process in DNA extraction starts with the lysis of the cell using appropriate chemicals, precipitation filtration by repeated vortex and centrifugation, and purification using spin columns. Proper molecular techniques must be observed in DNA extraction since the sample is very small and susceptible for contaminants. Researchers make use of gloves, mask, laboratory gowns, hair cap, and disinfected surfaces to avoid other potential DNA source to get mixed with the sample. All of the materials are sterilized as well. After DNA is extracted, DNA segment needs to be amplified. Polymerase chain reaction or PCR is a technique used in the lab to make millions of copies of particular section of DNA. It was first developed in 1980s by Nobel Prize awardee Kyrie Mullis. This development of PCR method is based on the cell replication in the central dogma. PCR can amplify samples that contain tiny amounts of DNA and it is used in laboratories all over the world. It can copy DNA from even a single hair follicle or a drop of blood left at a crime scene. Primers and heat-stable DNA polymerase are combined to the extracted DNA. The solution will then be subjected to repeated heating and cooling cycles using a thermal cycler. Different temperatures catalyze the reaction of primers and polymerases. Cycle, there are three steps, denaturation, annealing, and extension. In denaturation, extracted DNA, 
primers, polymerase, buffers, and other core ingredients are heated to 94 to 95 degrees Celsius. This breaks the bonds between two, between two strands of DNA which will both serve as the template for the production of the new DNA strands. In annealing, mixture is cooled down to 50 to 65 degrees Celsius to allow annealing or attachment of primers by hydrogen bonding to the DNA templates. Primers indicate which segment of DNA will be amplified. Forward and reverse primers are used for the 5' prime and 3' prime end of the DNA template. During the extension, temperature is raised to 72 degrees Celsius to catalyze complementary base pairing by the enzyme PAC polymerase. Polymerase is an enzyme extracted from heat-stable and heat-loving bacteria, Thermus aquaticus. Notice that the amount of DNA doubles with each PCR cycle. Thus, assuming you start with only one copy of DNA, after one cycle you will have two copies. These two copies from cycle 1 will be the source of DNA template strand for cycle 2. Thus, in cycle 2, there will be four DNA template strands, resulting to four copies of DNA. Following this, the cycle 3 will produce eight copies, cycle 4 will produce 16 copies, and so on. And so on. The optimal temperatures in each cycle may vary on the PCR reagents or kit used. The number of cycles for every experiment may also vary, depending on the amount of the DNA segment required for the experiment. PCR kits containing the complete reagents for amplification are already available commercially. PCR kits are specific to the type of sample and target DNA segments to be amplified. This may also be used to identify pathogens such as bacteria and viruses that cause an illness. It can also be used to identify or map genetic disorders. The prepared samples are placed in microtubes. The microtubes are placed in a thermal cycler. A thermal cycler is an equipment which can be programmed based on the required optimal temperature for denaturation annealing, and extension. Number of cycles can also be programmed accordingly. The next step after DNA amplification is the gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis separates DNA fragment according to their molecular size or repeats. The agarose gel is prepared based on the manufacturer's instruction. Agarose gel is a porous polysaccharide matrix which allows the genetic material to move. It looks like a colorless gelatin with slits or wells on one side where the samples will be placed. The solidified gel is submerged in the TAE buffer which allows electrical flow. Amplified DNA is mixed with the loading buffer and dye. The loading buffer allows the samples to get inside the wells of the gel. The dye will function later on in viewing. The DNA ladder is a combination of DNA fragments of known lengths and is added to the gel as reference. Browning of gel is the term used for the application of the electrical gradient. The electrical field is applied such that one end of the gel has a positive charge and the other end has a negative charge. Because DNA and RNA are negatively charged molecules, they will be pulled toward the positively charged end of the gel. Visualization of gel is used traditionally with the application of ethidium bromide and viewing under UV light. The resulting gel will show bands, which are separated genetic material. The samples are then analyzed and compared based on the known molecular size indicated on the DNA ladder. It must also be noted that ETBR is a carcinogenic compound. Thus, proper and careful handling must be observed throughout the experiment. Here is an example of the setup for the gel electrophoresis. Understand that gel electrophoresis only confirms the presence of DNA extracted and amplified. If the resulting gel shows no bands, theoretically, DNA extraction and amplification was not successful. The researchers may opt to do the extraction and amplification again until bands are present. 
Paternity testing is one of the applications in gel electrophoresis. The idea is to compare the genetic material with a known molecular size to the samples of a known molecular size. Again, we use DNA ladder to represent the known samples. In this example or scenario, the known samples are coming from the mother and a child. By fertilization, we know that an offspring will receive 50% genetic material from each parent. Following the theory, we expect that the resulting bands of the child will be a combination of the parents. Thus, the person that matched the genetic material of the mother and the child is dad 3. This application is also called as DNA fingerprinting. The last step is decoding the DNA sequence. There are two sequencing technologies which emerge as science and technology develop. These are the first generation and the next or second generation sequencing. First generation sequencing was developed in the 1970s. This include the Maxim Gilbert method and the Sanger method. Both methods allow sequencing for short nucleotides or DNA fragments. To decode the sequences, a radioactive label is attached to DNA. The Sanger method uses dideoxy or chain terminating versions of all four nucleotides with the different dyes. In the figure, we have red for thymine, blue for cytosine, green for adenine, and purple for guanine. Samples are then subjected to a capillary gel electrophoresis. As DNA pieces move through the capillary gel, sequencing machine with the use of laser detector reads the order of DNA bases. Results are shown as a chromatogram. Sequence information is stored in a computer memory and may be uploaded on a database. Next generation sequencing, on the other hand, allows massive parallel sequencing that are faster and cost effective. This allows a whole genome sequencing. Next generation sequencing improved significantly by the advancement in bioinformatics. A product of next generation sequencing is the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project was launched in 1990 and completed in 2003. The aim of the HGP is to determine the DNA sequence of the entire human genome. The sequence covers 99% of human genome with an accuracy of 99.99%. Long strings of nucleotides at first glance reveal nothing about how this genetic information directs the development of a living organism. The resulting DNA sequence must be compared to existing literature and databases. Another biotechnology tool is the DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting, also called as DNA profiling, is a method used to identify an individual from a DNA sample by looking at unique patterns. These unique patterns are in a form of mini-satellites and microsatellites. Just like the fingerprint, DNA fingerprint is unique to every individual. On average, about 99.9% .9 of the DNA between two humans is the same. The remaining percentage is what makes us unique. Although this might sound like a small amount, there are around 3 million base pairs different between two people. Modern-day DNA profiling uses short tandem repeat analysis or STR analysis. STRs are short DNA sequences, usually with 2 to 5 nucleotides that are repeated multiple times. STRs have lower mutation rates, which makes the data more stable and predictable. Because of these characteristics, STRs have high power of discrimination. In the figure, we see an illustration of short tandem repeats. Examples of an STR unit is the 2 nucleotide repeat unit cytosine and adenine, or CA. Suppose these nucleotide units are repeated in this segment, then 
sequence CA will be repeated 11 times. The number, combination, and repeat of these nucleotide units is what makes us different from each other. The segment of DNA containing STRs is targeted for DNA fingerprinting using specialized primers. Due to the efficient discriminatory ability of DNA fingerprinting, it is used in forensics to identify perpetrators. As a practice, let us try the sample scenario. The victim was able to stab his attacker with the knife. Thus, we can assume that the blood from the knife is from the attacker. After swabbing the knife and collecting blood samples from suspects, blood samples were subjected to DNA extraction, amplification, and gel electrophoresis. The result of the analysis is shown as peaks rather than bands. To identify the criminal, our known sample, the blood from the knife, will serve as our reference. The peaks of the blood from the knife will be compared to the blood from the suspects. Peaks represent molecular size of tandem repeats. Thus, suspect with the same peaks is most likely the criminal. In this case, it is suspect 3. In summary, we have discussed DNA sequencing, polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis, and DNA fingerprinting. These methods are innovative tools of biotechnology. Experiments may be designed with a combination of one or more depending on the goal of the investigation. Nowadays, researchers use at least two methods to achieve desired research goals. There are also more specific subtypes or specialties branching from these methods. Since biotechnology is also dependent on the advancement of society, these will continue to evolve in order to address society's demands. This also proves that scientific investigations and research endeavors are important aspects of our community locally and globally.